Nurse sharks aren't named after medical professionals? Well, that's news to me. What's going on everybody? My name is Brandon Ringstead and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. I want this to be a safe and welcoming place for anyone to broaden their horizons and go on an adventure. Today I used a canvas, a reference photo that I took, and Liquitex Basics acrylic paints. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Ginglimostoma serratum are known as nurse sharks. Don't confuse them with the gray and tawny nurse sharks. So I thought nurse sharks were named after medical professionals. They're a sweet and caring. But apparently scientists don't know why they're called nurse sharks. It could be an ancient Greek nusa, which means cat shark. It could be Old English for hearse which is carpet shark, or it could be the sound of a nursing infant. I like the nursing infant theory best. They are known for having one of the highest suction forces of all aquatic vertebrates. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I'm a jumping ahead of myself. I can't go jumping into facts before we know the distribution and habitat range. Where can we find the nurse shark? They are found in subtropical shallow marine water. They can be found in Eastern Pacific Ocean, Western Atlantic Ocean, and Eastern Atlantic Ocean. In the Pacific, they can be found from Baja, California to Peru. In the Western Atlantic, they can be found from Rhode Island to Brazil and in the Caribbean. In the Eastern Atlantic, they can be found from Cape Verde to Gabon. Nurse sharks don't migrate, so it is interesting to think about these populations so far apart. Right now, they're all one species, but you could be that person who discovers that they're not the same species. What habitat do they prefer? They like shallow, warm coastline with coral reefs, rocks, sandy flats, and eelgrass beds. Nurse sharks are typically found between 5 and 30 meters deep. They can be found deeper, but they don't like the cold water. And now if you've ever jumped into a lake and hit that cold layer, you know what I'm talking about. What are we looking for when identifying nurse sharks? Nurse sharks are one of the most identifiable sharks. Most sharks are gray, but nurse sharks are brown. Most sharks also have directionally smooth skin, but the nurse shark is totally smooth. The directionality of the smoothness is due to scaled called placoid teeth. They interlock and decrease drag when swimming. Nurse sharks are benthic or bottom associated sharks. They are cousins to the zebra shark that we learned about earlier. They grow to three meters long, which is roughly 10 feet long. Yes, they're typically larger than people, but don't let that freak you out. A quarter of their length is tail. They have a long top lobe and undeveloped bottom lobe. You can learn a lot about it where a fish swims by looking at its tail. The longer the top lobe is, the closer to the bottom the fish or shark swims. Since nurse sharks are bottom associated, it makes sense that they have a long top lobe. It also explains why their pectoral fins are spread wide to the side of their bodies. Nurse sharks have a broad, flat, rounded head and long barbels and nasal grooves leading to the mouth. Their mouths are small and lined with broad, fan-shaped teeth. They can slurp up prey by increasing the volume of their mouth quickly to decrease pressure. They also have a buccal pump to flow water over their gills. Did you know that animals who use suction feeding don't chew their food? 
Now that's a fun fact. Nerf sharks are so interesting. They just make up their own rules. Even their eyes don't follow the rules I have presented. In other adventures, I have stated that large eyes usually means the animal is nocturnal. Nurse sharks are nocturnal and have tiny eyes. I honestly could not find out why. I looked and I couldn't find anything. What a great mystery. I get that sharks have other senses to aid in prey detection and location. They are pressure sensitive to movement around them and are electrosensitive. They have small sensors under their nose called ampullae of Lorenzini. It can detect electrical currents made by muscles. Nurse sharks have barbels, which are packed full of these sensors. Let's get into some behaviors. Nurse sharks are known as the couch potatoes of the sea. They don't move fast and sleep all day. On average, they swim at 1.5 miles per hour with bursts up to 25 miles per hour at night when hunting. Most people picture roaming solitary sharks eating everything in their path. Nurse sharks even break this stereotype. During the day, nurse sharks sleep under rocky ledges and in caves. If there is not enough room, or there are no caves or ledges, they just cuddle together and sleep. Yes, nurse sharks cuddle and hold each other in groups up to 40 individuals during the day. The scientists have no idea why they do this. It is cute. Maybe that is the only explanation we need. It is true that nurse sharks are friendly to scuba divers. They will let you get close and can sometimes touch you. They are the most common species of shark that interact with divers regularly. Remember, they are sharks though. There have been 44 cases of nurse sharks attacked and none of them are fatal. But you guessed it. People were the ones harassing or being stupid. Shocking, I know. But since they have small mouths, they can't do too much damage. Speaking of mouths, that brings us to our next segment of the adventure. What do nurse sharks eat and how are they doing? Nurse sharks are carnivores and active hunters. They root through sand, coral, and rocks to find sleeping or hiding animals. They use their barbels to locate and then just suck their prey up. They regularly eat fish, other sharks, shrimp, sea urchin, octopuses, stingray, sea snakes, mollusks, crustaceans, and tunicates. So like a couch potato, they lounge around and eat anything. What an amazing shark. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed differently based on their location. In the Eastern Atlantic, they are listed as near threatened with a decreasing population trend. This study was conducted in 2006. This desperately needs to be updated. All other populations are thought to be least concerned, but are officially listed as data insufficient. Most populations are stable but it is hard to make a blanket statement since they don't migrate. One population can be doing fine, and the neighboring one can be under pressure. It all depends. There are some fisheries for nurse sharks. They are an easy prey for shark finning. They just sleep motionless in the bottom of shallow water. Let's do our part and stop shark finning. It is a waste of resources and isn't even healthy. In order to eat the shark fin, you have to boil the fin so much that all nutrients and toxin leave the meat. Then you are just left with shark mush. If you want to eat mush and make it responsibly sourced, just eat tofu. Luckily, nurse sharks rebound quickly when they breed. 
It is the other shark species that are hurting far more. This brings us to my favorite part of the adventure. What was my personal encounter with the nurse shark? In Florida, I have swam with nurse sharks at a Disney park, and it was amazing. I highly recommend swimming with these lovely animals if you get the chance. Just remember to pack your brain when you go on vacation. But this beautiful boy was photographed at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium in Tacoma, Washington. They aren't a sponsor for this video, but they are such a good place to visit. Now anyways, I know this is a boy because it has claspers behind its pelvic fins. Claspers are a pair of reproductive organs that hide behind the pelvic fins of males. This boy was swimming slowly off the bottom of the tank. It made a great photo for you. I like getting side-on photographs so that I can show the whole animal. I like that it was off the bottom so that you can see all of its fins. It was also exciting to see one swimming around. They typically don't move much during the day unless it's feeding time. I have a childlike love for these sharks. They're quirky and adorable and a total mystery sometimes. I love them. I am so happy I get to share this amazing creature with you. He looked so sleek and awe-inspiring. I just want to pet him. But I would do it in a smart way that, we, that he would approach me. I don't want to become a statistic. In this painting, I wanted to capture the gentle nature of these sharks. I want to make people love and not hate sharks. I want to inspire people to go out and visit our world. I want, to, I want to make people stop and think for a while before moving on. We move so fast these days. It is nice to slow down, get a good snuggle puddle, and chill like the nurse shark. There we have it. This painting is finished and I hope you had fun along the way. Please stick around for to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Now this month I am supporting NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. They are the nation's largest grassroot mental health organization. Now I typically do this charity alongside uh, Leon Hart. He has a wonderful Pokemon community. He's trying to currently reach 1 million subscribers. Let's go help him do that as well. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can go donate. This year, people need a lot of help. So please do the best that you can, even if it's by raising awareness of this organization. I'd really appreciate it. If you are having some issues with mental health, just know that you are loved and reach out if you ever need help. If you would like to help this community grow and be able to be sustainable, I would really appreciate that. Did you know that you can purchase the art that you see in these videos? I sell my originals at $12 a linear inch. I also offer museum quality G clay prints in most standard sizes. All you have to do is contact me and then I can get that ordered and shipped off to you. I offer a $6 per linear inch and a $3 per linear inch options. Now my $6 linear inch is going to be touched up by me and it's going to be as close to the original as possible. It's going to have glitter, glass bead gel medium, pearlescence on it, whatever the original had it will have that as well. Now my $3 linear inch will not have any of these things. I'm also selling posters and vinyl stickers. My posters are $15 and my stickers are five. Please use hashtag nature meets paper to let me know where you put these stickers or posters. I really like seeing where you put them. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to you. 
If you would like, you can subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. Now I do my best to post new content every other weekend. Thanks again. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.